Hello everyone, welcome back to Madog and Matty's Gaming Dissertations, working title. And tonight we mm. shall be tackling a different game from our last few outings, a very unknown game. Programmed, designed and written by Poppy. Art, animation, character design and additional writing by Mez. This is a point-and-click adventure game released by what is now known as Poppy Digital. You can get it for mm. free from uh, itch.io. So it says independent a game as independent can get. This is Parsnip. Yeah. This is... Uh chosen because uh, we are recording this at Easter, so... Well, and first of all, bunnies. this will come out after Easter, so happy belated Easter, everybody. But that's not happy, really... The... <laughs> happy Resurrection Day, Jesus. <laughs> Drink to that, I guess. <laughs> Thanks for that. Okay, so Parsnip. Last time... We talked, well, amongst the many things that we talked about during our Stupid Invaders playthrough, we also touched upon uh, trans representation in media. Seeing where this is going. No, no, you don't. Let me finish. The makers of this game are queer. The head writer, Poppy, is trans. So this is her debut game, by all intents and purposes. She has made more games after this one, but this is the only point-and-click adventure game that's available in that catalogue. It serves as some sort of a prologue to her own narrative universe. Let's put it like that. As I said, when... you can get this game for free off of itch.io. You can leave a tip, should you choose so. I, for one, decided to pick up this game, and then I decided also to buy the direct follow-up to this one. So, with that out of the way, Parsnip. What year was this made? This came out a couple of years ago, by now, I believe. You might immediately notice a couple of interesting elements about this title right off the bat. Yeah, notice the animation, it reminds me of the Eastern European stuff like Kratek and stuff. And stuff. Yes, I like the hand-drawn animation and the character models are indubitably appealing. I also enjoy the backgrounds. They exude this uh, very specific storybook quality that reminds me of the works by Richard Scarry. There is a oh, yeah. poetry and a musicality to these images, which is funny because there is no music whatsoever, and that's the second element you might notice. The sound design so, in this game is bizarre, to say the very least. Aside from a few sounds here and there, such as parsnip walking or running, there is no music. There is no ambient music, there is no regular music, diegetic or extra diegetic, save for a couple of moments. And I'm pretty sure that in those cases, the music is stock. So the goal of this game is to bake a cake for breakfast, because nothing says healthy breakfast more than a cake. Parsnip is this happy-go-lucky character, obnoxiously so. He drives mad all of his neighbors. Speaking of which, yeah. here's Lerose. She is the Squidward to our SpongeBob, so yeah. to speak. 
Yeah, and uh, Parsona seems to be rather naive about the uh, ways of the world when he referred to the wine as juice. You'd think so. I think there is something sinister about Parsnip, and the game is not quite coy in suggesting so, as you will see in time. Yeah, I had a feeling that there's something sinister going on, like usually they do in this kind of games. Well, yes and no, it's more complicated than that. Because I mentioned before the lack of music. I theorized that it might be a conscious decision rather than a budget decision. This art style, an art style that seems so lively and musical, as I said, has no music to accompany it in the slightest, and that contrast creates a feeling of unease. Something is deeply wrong here. There is nothing quite as unsettling and unpleasant as to move about in this colorful world without any sort of meaningful sound. <laughs> to it. The silence is deafening, and it works a bit too well, because at some point I decided to play some music in the background, because it was too unpleasant to go through this game without any music whatsoever. I never realized nor appreciated how upsetting <laughs> A game can be without sound. Mm. So there's no sound effect. There are a few, yes, and they will pop out when you least expect them. And when they do, you'll know something is up. So he's yeah. looking for ingredients to bake his cake. So he's asking people around. It's the classic adventure game puzzle of I need items, I go find items, I talk to characters, maybe they have the items I want. I haven't followed that much when I've been trying to focus on conversation, but uh, I haven't noticed that they had said something sinister yet, or have they? Well, no, not yet. Don't worry, you will see. I make sure to... <clears throat> linger <laughs> on the sinister wording. Ah, Belle here, she's reading Milk Jug. Mm. I think there are a couple of jokes I could make. This is a classy show. <laughs> this is a classy show. Yes, sure. Yeah, I so, can say that with a straight wit after stupid invaders. <laughs> <laughs> you ruined me with that game. Yeah. Alright, so we have a puzzle here, quote-unquote. We have a ship that's blocking the way. I was expecting something overcomplicated, but no, as it turns out, all you have to do is talk to the ship. Let's talk yeah. about character design. There is something about this game that I find very appealing, about the art design in general, the direction. Oh yeah, that's a reminder of my childhood, as I mentioned before, the critic. And I remember this weird VHS uh, that was found from the local library, it has a couple of um, Easter European cartoons. There was this uh, professor character, and then there's, there was this uh, wolf thing that uh, chased hair or something. Oh, oh, I know that one. It's a famous Russian cartoon. It's an animation milestone in the Eastern Europe. No, pagadi, sayats! Okay. Yes, that one. Me and Devar are well versed in the <clears throat> practice of the Russian slapstick genre. Also known as bad slapstick. <laughs> uh, right.
I was going to focus on such details as the olive-shaped pupils that these characters have. Ah, uh, yeah, those are known from the especially 20s art style where they... More the shape was... late 1920s, early 1930s. There is a specific rubber hose inspired work here. Yeah, to most of the current days, uh, some of the current days comics use that eye style. Where they... There has been a resurgence in the rubber hose style in the last uh, decade or so. Caphead definitely helped to that um, direction. This is Squirrel Girl. That's her name, apparently. She's a squirrel from a squirrel family, and her name is Squirrel Girl. I like the detail of her conserving candy in her bushy tail. I'm not a stranger, I'm Parsnip Parner. <laughs> My parents told what me the... you were the most strange stranger, and that I shouldn't talk to you. Yeah, I noticed that the squirrel referred Parsnip as old man. Oh, that's because she's a young punk, and anybody who's older than her is an old man automatically. Oh, Parsnip okay, is actually okay. quite young, to my understanding. Although I don't know what uh, his age is supposed to be. It's unclear. You know, much like the age of SpongeBob is unclear. Oh, yeah. Speaking of which, this character seems to be as you pointed out, rather oblivious to the evils of the world or the fact that all of his neighbors don't really like him. There's Belle, the milk woman, who seems to tolerate him, at the very least, but she doesn't have to live around him, now does she? Mm. All the interactions with these characters really point out that he is not well liked, and the more you get to spend time with him, the more it makes too much sense. There is something rather disquieting about how Parsnip seems to be naively going about his business without any sense of time or self, for that matter. I must bake a cake! for breakfast, and until I add my breakfast, the time is not moving forward for me. Now look at this magpie. Oh, I'm sorry, I meant to say the magnificent magpie. That is 100% a rubber hose design. Black and white. Mm. Slightly gray beak. Olive pupils. That is such a good design. The magpie is, I guess, a bit eccentric, would be the word. Thanks, D. Magnificent Magpie. Yeah, I guess uh, we still haven't moved any more forward in uh, finding ingredients to a cake. Yes, we've only just begun. I feel the tattered figure Swiss but I must call a fine tree against its presence. Squack! Squack! Hey, what yeah. you got there, Magpie? A knife! No! <laughs> oh. I That's believe ni <laughs> the knife will be important. Yeah, I have a feeling it's going to end in so much back. You need a knife to cut cake, obviously. <laughs> I believe at this point is where the music begins. And just like that, the atmosphere changes drastically. Because you see, around this habitation, we go from pure silence to a low, menacing hum surrounding it. Is that uh, the Star of David? No, no, that's not the Star of David. That's the five-pointed Star of Evil. You know, the 
generic evil star that's usually uh, associated with summoning uh, the, pentagram. The, the pentagram, yes, devils and demons. Incidentally, this house is supposed to be abandoned and uninhabited. Clearly, that's not the case. Mm. My, I have milk. Well, of course, yes, I do. You may take my milk, Parsnip Banner. Yes, take my milk, drink it all, yes. Great! Thanks, new friend! It's remarkable that uh, the only quote-unquote neighbor Parsnip manages to actually make a connection is the one who seems to be much weirder than him. Mm. So, Woodland Creatures is uh, in cahoots with Satan again. What do you mean, again? <laughs> uh, I was remembering of that uh, one uh, South Park Christmas special. Oh, okay. We should not mention South Park here. We have taste. I say that after watching several hours worth of stupid invaders. I'm aware of the hypocrisy. Okay, so we also have the second sound effect of the game. Gaming! <laughs> the gaming console. Bees. Bees, my god. Oh, what a big bee. I hope it doesn't sting me. You're setting yourself up for failure pretty hard. You're lucky this is not a Sierra game. Yeah, I noticed that the background of the trees is sinisterly black. Just void there. Uh, no, it's dark green, actually. That's where the forest oh. is becoming deeper. Uh, yes, Parsnip. Where do you think honey comes from? Do you want some honey, kid? Yes. Oh, by the way, I did not skip on that dialogue. The dialogue skipped itself automatically. It's trying okay. to conjure up some sort of comedic timing. This would work better if the characters were voiced. But <clears throat> clearly that's a limit that we cannot make it a fault of the makers of this game. Yeah. I guess we'll have to do it. <laughs> if you remember, too, because we are also having a conversation, and this is a pre-recorded video, as it is our style at this point. Right. Uh, what would have happened if he had tried to go to deeper to the forest? Oh, you can't. This is the limit. I've actually showcased to you the left and right ends of the world here. This place, by the way, is referred to by future games in the metaverse, if you will, as the Daffodil Lane. Because there are daffodils, and it's a lane. So, Daffodil Lane. Makes sense, right? <laughs> Yeah. I don't go to school unless my parents make me, and they've been away at work all week! So I don't gotta go! Pretty sweet, huh? Wow, that's ultra cool! But you know what's cooler? What's cooler, Parsnip? School. <laughs> that's pretty yeah. much the expected response. <laughs> so... Yeah. Daffodil Lane, which is part of a bigger location referred to as Blue Bell County, I believe. The main location of the game in this fictional world. Oh yes! It looks like Bell accidentally broke that bottle of milk. 
Oh, you know, accidents happen. Mm. Hello, Leros. You seem happy and solar today. She's just in her artistic zone. No, I'm pretty sure she's depressed. Drinking wine at 4 p.m. Hmm. Well, might I be mean, an indication. I mean, isn't the uh... aggressive line work represents the issues I have at work getting the four year olds to appreciate post ironic vapor feminist mm. punk art, the deep blacks making up the lines, however, represent my despair as they continue to play, blah, 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 blah. Wealthy capitalists used to keep us from expressing ourselves that well, blah, 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 blah. Okay. I mean, don't they drink quite a lot in France? They have this kind of specific drinking culture. She's not they... French. Okay. <laughs> I don't think she is. I don't know if you noticed, but this is exactly the SpongeBob and Squidward dynamic. You have the obnoxiously hyperactive character to the point of psychosis, constantly tormenting the neighbor, whom is a frustrated, disappointed artist who has mm. grown quite humorless and joyless. <laughs> yeah, I haven't watched that show in like two decades. Well, would you look at that? The only bottle of milk who isn't broken is mine own. And she was nice enough to wrap it with a ribbon. <laughs> Uh, well, that milk is it very milk colored? It's chocolate milk. Oh. He wants only chocolate milk because regular milk is no fun, and he's a fun bun. His words, his actual words. On that note, he takes a bit too much sugar in his diet. Right, so I have a suspicion that Belle might not be good at her job. Or rather, might not care. <laughs> All the broken bottles of milk are giving me that idea. <laughs> so you can bother Squirrel Girl and your neighbors pretty much all throughout the game. You might find different dialogue every time you do so. Although it changes periodically at specific intervals once certain soup goals have been accomplished. I believe the bee might have our Oni on the ready at this point. Oh wait, I forgot, we have to give him the flower first. Hey guys, I have some flowers for you. <laughs> Nice one, kid. Maybe you aren't as useless as you look. How about you plant them down there, and we can get to making your honey. Sure thing, Mr. B. Is this metaphorical? No, no. They are going to literally make honey for him. Besides, I don't think metaphors work on parsnip. <laughs> He's immune to them. He's too, uh, shall we say, entrapped in his own world. Yeah. Look at him skipping and jumping. That's adorable, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nothing wrong here. Okay, Satanist cow, what's your goal now? Not a cow. <laughs> a goat? Close, but no cigar. I could tell you, but it's a spoiler. <laughs> okay, space on that. I may be able to it. offer you flower, should you require it in return for a few favors. <laughs> oh boy, I love helping my neighbors. If it'll be uh, not too much trouble, I would very much like some candles. They will guide me and light the path for the king. 
Uh, summoning ritual. What? No! <laughs> <laughs> uh, hello, Squirrel Girl. Any chance you can give me your chocolate chips? Would you like to help me in summoning Satan? Hey, again, it's me, Parsnip. Don't Get ask me for the chocolates again. My Mind works for the things. You will be banned in your account. <laughs> My dad works at Nintendo. <laughs> oh. I noticed that the squirrel has a lollipop stuck in his tail. Oh, she has all sorts of candy stuck in her tail. Chocolate chips, lollipop. Good to know, squirrel girl. Good to know. Good talk. Good times. Yes. So when delivers those milks, are they thrown at there or are they I just... think that's the I think that's the assumption here. I think she might have just thrown the bottles. So one doesn't uh, come after and broke them. No, well, considering that she delivered our chocolate milk at our home intact and wrapped in a fancy ribbon, I think she might not like a couple of the people here. Yeah. I think that's the implication. Either that or she really was inattentive but doesn't care enough to fix the problem okay so she said i have candles but i will not give them to you he said let's trade no let's not do that she said and he said yay a trade it is i'll make you a pretty picture because you're a pretty artist that makes pretty pictures mm. so mm. he lives very much in his own world and is actually not a good person. This is something that comes out of his many conversations. He seems so energetic and solar and naive. I and don't know what child, no means. But he clearly doesn't understand what consent is. Or indeed, he doesn't take into consideration other people's feelings. He only has his own image of what the people in his life are like. And that's the painting he made. That monstrosity. It is so abominable, it cannot be shown. <laughs> yeah, something is not right with this guy. Something is not right indeed. And I don't know if he's either actually a psychopath or if a traumatic event in his life had left him so utterly broken that he resorted subconsciously to this facade of happiness in order to cope with said trauma. It could very well be both, but it is never quite explained. I think she liked it. I can borrow some candles now. I'll follow Rose inside! <laughs> Oh no. Parsnip! This is breaking and entering. So he's just like SpongeBob in a very bad SpongeBob episode. Wow, Rosie has her own computer machine. I'd get one, but I worry too much about cyber bullies. Let's search her history. Is 24 units of alcohol okay for lunch? <laughs> art.com slash edgy meet and <laughs> rabbit.com <laughs> right this must be Rosie's shoes how pretty I'm going to steal them don't steal her shoes parsnip 
Parsnip. Parsnip. Oh, look, candles, how convenient. While she I think Matrock likes me. What a nice smelling bath. Maybe I should join in. Parsnip. <laughs> I better not, though. My clothes would get soggy. Yes, that's the problem. No concept of personal space, boundaries whatsoever. Uh, I have to say, they really nailed this character in how sinister, in how profoundly unsettling he can be. And they didn't yeah. overdo it either. It is a series of hints, a series of moments that give you pause, but it never goes out of its way to become too obvious. I have a feeling those sheep has something to do with all of this. The sheep are not what they seem. <laughs> yeah, that stare is way too blank. Yes, the sheep it. are pretty unsettling too, once you notice that they never blink. Hello, D Magnificent Magpie. Fine weather we're having. Right, so our new best friend in the whole wide world requested a couple of candles. Here you go. Hi. Okay. I brought some candles for you. Do you want to voice oh, the... <laughs> wonderful, majestic. My friend, Parsnip Bunner, you have most impressed me. There is just one um, small thing I require, and then you may have your reward. Your eternal I, reward. I require a knife, small rabbit, small creature. My previous one was damaged while cutting assorted meats and bones it happens to the best of us <laughs> it's a it's a butcher's worst nightmare isn't it oh no i have so much meat to <clears throat> not kill and my knife is broken now what do i do <laughs> uh the parsnip has on a knife related incident apparently right it's a good thing parsnip is such a neighborly uh neighbor <laughs> Such a well-meaning neighbor. He'll get you a knife. Yes, let's accidentally help out a serial killer or something. Well, would you look at that? The knife was important after all. Yeah. The magnificent magpie. You love shiny things. Hey, can I see your knife? Can I can I borrow it for a while? Yes. Hark! the surf wishes to arm itself, could this be the start of a revolution? <laughs> <laughs> of, of a coup? Hmm? Hmm. A, revolt? a revolt? Oh, no, 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 of course not. I would never try to overthrow you. Verily, that is what the surf would say to thy ruler. That's what they would say. I have to agree with that. <laughs> Before a spurg in the throne, mayhap <laughs> if thou prove thy loyalty to me, tell me how great I art. The magnificent magpie is a fair and beautiful ruler. We should all look to their majesty. More, more. Squack, squack. <laughs> we all bow down to the magnificent magpie, the richest and most charming bird alive. Wonderful, wonderful. Squark, squark. Thou art truly a loyal serf. Thou may have thy knife. All right, we have a knife. Oh no, <laughs> we have a knife. <laughs> hey, Parsnip, what you got there? A knife! No! I guess the magnificent magpie have 
is not aware of the incident Parsonal is referring to. Yes, I'm so glad you noticed that, actually. I have a knife for you, swish, stab. Uh-huh. Cat. Cat, 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 cat. Only joking. It's always important to be careful with knives. Friends get hurt otherwise. See, that's an example of a much more sinister line than yes. you would expect it to be. <laughs> As promised, you reward some flower, wheat, ground to dust as all should be are you sure that's flour <sighs> also it's very unhygienic to just throw flour onto the floor without its confection yes let's use it to bake a cake that seems like a great idea also bless you <laughs> I'm ready! I'm ready! I'm ready! Let's talk to Squirrel Girl again. <laughs> she hasn't been bothered enough times. Hi, Squirrel Girl. Feel like sharing your chocolates yet? CHOCOLATE! Sharing is caring, you know. No, I told you already. I only have these left in until Mama and Dad get home. Nee. I hope they aren't long. The house is getting kind of cold and dusty. I keep sneezing. Eh. I'm sure they will be back soon, Squirrel Girl. They've been away for a week. I wonder I where go. they went. I got to go. The sheep are watching me. The yellow-eyed monster can see everything. Uh-huh. Oh. I'm sure that's nothing. Oh, okay. See you later, bud. You aren't my buddy, bitch. All right. Wait. Was the yellow... No, wait. That was Yellow King. Yellow the monster. Is the king in yellow, you mean. Oh, oh there. Hello there. What's this one? Oh, new friend! Uh, those are a couple of interesting bugs. They look like eyes. Oh well, I'm sure it's nothing. <laughs> oh, they're a box? No, it's eyes. <laughs> I was being sarcastic. Eyes observing the child skating around. I'm sure nothing bad will come out of this. Yes, nothing bad at all. Nothing bad ever happens in the world of Parsnip, Banner. We have a hint there's a lot of sinister events, but... No payoff no one yet. Ha yeah. I smell a bloodshed coming on. I've sure seen is, a... kid. Take it. It's time for us to cloak off. I've seen a lot of games that pretend to be cutesy and innocent, and then they suddenly. Well, ah! That's the thing, right? This game is not actually pretending that it's cute and innocent. The sinister layout is there for all to see. The cute storybook facade, it's what it is, a facade that reflects how the main character perceives the world around him. A world where nothing bad ever happens. But the bad things do happen all the time, he just doesn't notice them. Yeah, but Squirrel Girl got eaten, I presume. No. <laughs> but you should be worried. Yes, this is our new bestest friend. 
Oh no, is there going to be molesting involved? Uh, no, no. No, 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 you see, he wants to do a summoning ritual. What do you need in a summoning ritual? No, I was wondering about the squirrel. Sacrifices. Uh. It's not that kind of game. Yeah, it's not Dreaming Mary. It's not a bad game. It's not made by horrible people. <laughs> you know? I wouldn't be showcasing this game if it was the case. Yeah. That's my friend Rosie. She's an artist. She does such pretty drawings. They are footful, Parsnip. Footful. Hi, Rosie. Parsnip, it's like 4 p.m. I'm way too tired to talk to you right now. Conversations with you are like snorting E number five. No, numbers. I'm not sure I get this joke. I guess it's a preservative. Breakfast parsnip at 4 p.m. A cake? A cake? In this time of day? Located entirely in your kitchen? <laughs> Cakes can be eaten at no, any time. No, I haven't time. had breakfast yet, so it's still morning. <laughs> Oh, of course, Parsnip. I forgot that revolves around you. Parsnip, the deity of time, the center of the universe. I don't know what those words mean, but I agree. So, Leros here is my mood, <laughs> generally speaking. Is Parsnip himself some kind of immortal deity? No, it's just a child with issues. Okay. It's time to bake a cake. Yes, let's bake a cake. So we have to do the classic take item, use it with other item, in this case a cake bowl. And then the game will basically be over. I told you this was a short one. Oh, so soon already? Yes, like I said, this was Poppy Digital's very first game. And it serves more as a prologue to other projects that she worked on. And we might showcase those games too in the future. They are mostly visual novels, though, not adventure games, not point-and-click adventure games. So, no animation in those ones. But a lot more writing. So, this is where we decide the ending of the game. Because there are is a different ending. There is a different ending depending on whether you give the cake to all of your friends, in quotation marks, or you eat it alone. Are you going to show all the endings? I'm going to showcase two endings. The two most extreme endings, that is. The two bad worst endings, specifically. And, and I guess there's no good ending. I believe there is, but I'm not going to showcase it in this playthrough. I'm only showcasing two endings. Like I said, you can get this game for yourself on itch.io. It's actually yeah. free. Here you go. I hope you like it. Okay, so Belle has her slice of cake. Hey, Roxanne, or whatever your name is at this point, <laughs> would you like some cake? Hey, Rosie, would you like some cake? Uh, I don't know, Parsniff. You've been really weirding me out today. 
but I guess a slice of cake might make up for you being a little freak, though. So I guess I'll have a slice. He is a little freak, though. He enters into people's home without permission, steals their candles, steals their shoes, too, come to think of it. Yeah. You can only exit buildings by interacting with shoes on the floor. So the implication is that he stole shoes. <laughs> Hi there, the magnificent magpie. Would you like some cake? Squark, squark. Verily, cake is a dish worthy of any ruler. Hand it over, serve. Here you go, I hope you enjoy your treat! Which doesn't come with a treat! Because I'm the nice one! When it's Halloween, I say treat or treat! <laughs> because I'm so creative! Hi, new friend, I finished my cake! Some cake, sugar? Why? Today's activities have left me rather hungry. I will have some cake, Basnip Panha. Post it through the leather box and I shall enjoy it. Cool! Super duper cool! I hope you like it! Tra la 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 la! <laughs> oh, you did it give to the bee! Oh. I tried to, but there is no option for it, sadly. I tried to use the cake with the bee, but it wouldn't allow me, so I assumed that the bee cannot have cake, which is deeply unfair. Then again, it's a cake baked by Parsnip Banner, so <laughs> I don't know how much I would want it. It's finally time to eat the cake. The sheep oh. ate the cake and died. Belle tragically passed away after ingesting paint from Parsnip's cake. Leroux sadly passed away after contracting tetanus from the cake. The magnificent magpie contracted bird flu from Parsnip's cake, but died instead from a heart attack upon seeing all the crumbs. <laughs> Sad mm. music plays in the background. So uh. that's... <laughs> that's one of the endings. So, by giving cake to everybody, including the ship, we killed everyone, but we helped Squirrel Girl survive her captor. Her parents are still dead, though. So, conversely, what would happen if we ate the cake all on our own, without sharing it? Well, this is what happens. Aha! It's time for the ship to revolt against the oppression. The ship rose up under the control of the Blessed One and his ritual of blood. The world was overrun and all life perished, excluding Parsnip, who didn't notice anything had gone wrong and died after playing with a toy trumpet. <laughs> Yep. So the world either dies or lives, depending if we give cake to the demonic cultist ship. But the cake didn't seem to have any sinister ingredients. No, no, the cake was just so poorly made that it poisoned one, it gave bird flu to another one, it gave tetanus to another one. It was just... The worst cake. <laughs> uh, and yeah. I think, considering that there were references, multiple references of various 
accidents involving parsnip in the past, I can see why that might have happened. He got help, it is just a such, such a klutz. Yes, I'm sure that's the only issue here. <laughs> So this game was made, again, as you saw the credits multiple times, Poppy and Mez. Those were the two credited for the making of this game. Notice that no one was credited for the music composition. Future games by these people will actually have background music for a spell, and they are more are, enjoyable because of that. Are they custom? Or... They actually have a credited composer for the game that follows this up. The sequel to Parsnip. And I call it sequel, but it's more loosely a game that's connected to this one. But it doesn't necessarily follow the canon to a T. But there is a clear reference to the abandoned house, the ritual, the summoning ritual. Squirrel people, skulls, a ah, game the cartridge. The testimony of Trixie Glimmer Smith. Exactly. I'm so glad you looked it up. Now, yeah. the testimony of Trixie Glimmer Smith follows the perils of the titular Trixie. It's a game that I could best describe as a queer, furry, Lovecraftian horror visual novel. And if that doesn't so, capture your interest, I don't know what will. And like I said, Parsnip has multiple endings. Also, Trixie has multiple endings. So I assume that a canon in this uh, quote-unquote cinematic universe is a loose concept. Which is fine by me. It's more about the crafting of an atmosphere, of recurring characters and situations, of a recursive theme. The theme being the king in yellow, <laughs> by the way, <laughs> among mm -hmm. others. So it's interesting, I am reading and playing through that game as we speak, and I wanted to showcase Parsnip to begin this uh, possible potential future venture, as a way to properly get us all on the same page as to generally what to expect artistically and narratively from this uh, whole series. The first game is a point-and-click adventure game and it works as a proof of concept. The second game is a visual novel, and I think by that point the author has started to really find her footing as a writer and how to present her stories. There is even a uh, PDF that includes some original anthological stories that you can read for your uh, enjoyment to expand on the universe itself. And I make it sound more grandiose than it actually is. It's a more intimate experience than that, I believe. I have that impression. I would recommend checking out both this game and all the other games released by Poppy Digital, which you can find on itch.io in its entirety. There are comics, there is a browser game, there are more than one visual novel, and there is, of course, this point-and-click adventure game. They are not very expensive, and I think they are worth at least a look, and you should support your trans and queer creators and help them get the visibility that they deserve, because mainstream media will, not, will most likely not go through the trouble of doing that all the time, if at any point in time at all, really. Most, if not all, the successful queer creators in the mainstream media are people who came out of the closet as their careers were already going strong. Most queer people don't have that luxury. And it's rare that they manage to make it in some sort of mainstream fashion. We need to support our queer creator if we actually care about hearing their voices. 
and uh, know about the kind of stories that they want to tell. So thanks for coming to my TED talk. I've been Madog Thy Master, and this guy over here has been some. <laughs> yeah, I was just uh, reading or looking at the ladyverse that is apparently. Yes, the beautiful ladyverse. I believe. Three lesbians in a barrow. That would be her third game, I believe. All my lesbians end up in caves. <laughs> That sounds sinister. <laughs> it's probably not. <laughs> uh, right, so I seem to have successfully given you the curiosity worm, which is great. Right then. Mm. Happy belated Hister. Happy anticipated Pride Month. Let's all survive together this year. Good night, everybody. Good night. What you got there? A knife? No! <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>